I'm Motley Fool Canada Senior Analyst Nick Seipel, and this is the 5-Minute Major, here to make you a smarter investor in about five minutes. Today, we're discussing the full year 2023 earnings results for the Brookfield family of companies. My guest today is Motley Fool Canada Chief Investment Officer Ian Butler. Ian, thanks for joining me. Great to be here, Nick. Uh, always excited to be here with you as well. Ian, before we get into Brookfield's results, let's maybe do a quick overview of the Brookfield empire. With about half a dozen publicly listed entities, it can feel overwhelming to the uninitiated. Totally. And I, and I get the sense that a lot of people sort of see the Brookfield, the, the variety of Brookfield entities list, Brookfield listings, and uh, they simply run away. They, they immediately label it complicated, too complicated, and just say, forget it, I'll, I'll go elsewhere. But in reality, we're going to try and give a quick overview here in under a minute and uh, hopefully steer, steer 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 some people straight uh, so they're not running away for no good reason. Um, so I think of it as sort of a mothership and that mothership is Brookfield Corporation. Uh, its ticker is on the Toronto Stock Exchange BN and it has ownership stakes in the various entities that you see uh, listed also on the Canadian Stock Exchange and they're cross-listed as well in the US. So those entities are Brookfield Asset Management, and that's ticker symbol BAM. Uh, Brookfield Infrastructure, ticker symbol BIP.UN. Uh, Brookfield Renewables, uh, ticker symbol there is BEP. Uh, Brookfield Business Partners, which is a private equity firm, uh, ticker symbol there BBU. And a new entity by the name of Brookfield Reinsurance, so an in insurance solutions provider, uh, BNRE. So those are five let's call them tentacles that sort of hover below the mothership, Brook Brookfield Corporation again. And they all sort of operate independently, but they all indeed do flow capital into that mothership, which then gets dispersed amongst the family. Um, Brookfield Asset Man Management, Asset Management Company, infrastructure owns a variety of assets. I'm gonna run out of time here. So let's let's just say mothership, tentacles below, each are independent. And, uh, and I think we're gonna spend some just a minute or so on Brookfield Corporation's earnings, right? Yeah, so let's beam up to the mothership, look at Brookfield Corporation's full year 2023 earnings. What were your biggest takeaways from Brookfield year? So the entity that was not that I didn't mention earlier is Brookfield Properties, which was taken private by the mothership uh, maybe a year ago, maybe a bit more than a year ago, maybe a couple of years ago. Um, so that's a commercial real estate portfolio. Commercial real estate is obviously um, a bit of a problem child in, in the market's eyes these days. So that's, that's where my focus goes when I see Brookfield's earnings. And... Frankly, I don't think it's near the problem child that the market would have you believe. Um, Brookfield deployed about $1.8 billion worth of capital across its real estate portfolio in 2023. Uh, in terms of operating performance, they had operating income growth of 7% in the portfolio. Uh, 15 million square feet of leases were executed across all of its office assets. And tenant sales and its retail assets, sales per square foot that were 21% higher than in 2019 before the whole pandemic issue uh, hit the portfolio. So that doesn't seem like a total disaster to me. Uh, you're not paying very much when you paying very much for that commercial real estate portfolio, or maybe even you're not paying anything for it uh, when you buy a share of Brookfield Corporation. So it's, I, I don't think near the issue that the market would have you believe. And uh, and and I think other, otherwise, I, I'm just consistently uh, dazzled by the numbers that, uh, that all things Brookfield throw up. It's, it's, it's a, massive entity, a global behemoth. Um, they've got the financial flexibility and wherewithal to sort of transact wherever, whenever they want. And they service shareholders very nicely with that capital too. They bought back $600 million worth of shares in 2023. Uh, they're targeting another billion dollar worth, billion dollars worth of buybacks in 2024. And we got a nice dividend increase from Brookfield Corporation of about 14% uh, along with the earnings announcement. Yeah, Ian, so that's Brookfield Corporation. Let's talk a little bit about Brookfield Asset Management now. This is a company that's just completed its first full year as an independent business after, be, after being spun out from Brookfield Corporation. Trades under the ticker BAM. How do you rate Brookfield Asset Management's performance in its first year as a publicly traded company? Totally. And, and while it's a newly, newly publicly newly independently publicly traded company. I mean, Brookfield Asset Management has been around for a long time. So it's it's. I, I think of it much the same as I always have. Um, and similarly, I sort of grew up in the Canadian asset management business where you had to fight tooth and nail to sort of bring assets to the door. Brookfield Asset Management is bringing literally hundreds of billions of dollars to the door every year. And that's fee-bearing capital. And, all, and, the, and that capital is going to generate lovely distrib distributable cash flow for its shareholders. And that's a great thing about it being independent because shareholders now get a piece of it, whereas it used to stay within the mothership. 
All right, just right, barely at five minutes. We're out of time. Thank you for joining us for this edition of the 5-Minute Major. We'll see you next time. Move on.